plasticity to the paint film but obvious this name itself is going to suggest plasticizers it means it is going to give some elasticity to the paint film the examples of the plasticizers that are added to the paint are triphenyl phosphate dibutyl tartrate tributyl phthalate these all are the examples of the plasticizers that are added coming to the very important component that is varnish now this varnish is very important we have seen the two terms that is paint and another now that are going to describe is varnish this varnish is homogeneous colloidal dispersion solution of natural or synthetic resins in oil or thinner or both what we do we take either natural resins or we take a synthetic resin and then we try to put it into oil or thinner and whatever homogeneous dispersion solution that we are getting okay your what will happen your resin is going to get dispersed in your solvent or you can say your thinners and whatever final homogeneous solution colloidal dispersion solution obtained is known as your varnish this one has to remember what are the types of varnish that are used first is oil varnish they are homogeneous solution of one or more natural or synthetic resins in drying oil and volatile solvent to which dryers are added okay so these are basically you can say the oil varnishes they are the homogeneous solutions or of the synthetic or natural resins in drying oil or volatile solvent to which dryers are added you can see here oil varnish is going to produce hard lustrous and durable film that is a very good quality of the oil varnish the oil varnish that you are applying on the surface is going to give hard lustrous means shiny and durable film means long lasting film oil varnishes are used for interior as well as exterior work <clears throat> second is you have spirit varnish now what is this spirit varnish you can see here spirit varnish are prepared by dissolving resin okay whatever natural or synthetic resin that you are choosing is dissolved completely in volatile solvent and that is going to give rise to spirit varnish so this spirit varnish basically uses the volatile solvents like methylated solvent now as you are aware it is using volatile solvent so what happens it is going to get dry very quickly so they dry very quickly and also the drawback is cracks soon it means due to volatile solvent there are chances that spirit varnish gets cracks very early compared to the oil varnish now it gets easily affected by weather so this is the drawback compared to the oil varnish if you see here in earlier the comparison that is you can see the point that oil varnish produce very hard lustrous and durable film okay on comparison to that spirit varnish is going to form a film that is going to basically crack early okay then we can see here oil varnish are used for interior and exterior work and here you can see here that spirit varnish are basically getting affected by weather so it is very difficult to use the spirit varnish for the exterior work this one has to remember now what are the characteristics of good varnish let us try to understand it a good varnish it is very difficult to have all these qualities in one particular varnish but still we have listed down what are the characteristics or what should be the properties of the good varnish the first point is it should adapt itself to temperature changes okay that is very important like suppose you have applied the varnish at room temperature and suddenly if you, uh, if the temperature changes during change of the season or any how operating temperature changes then what should happen that particular varnish 
should be able to adapt itself to the temperature changes then we have a good varnish <coughs> should form elastic film why elastic film is important because what happens if elastic film is formed then this varnish will not get crack away easily okay so it is very important that this good varnish should form elastic film then we have <coughs> this good varnish should not fade or crack due to weather changes okay this is very important that it should not crack or fade due to weather changes otherwise it is not good to use for exterior work then the good varnish should be basically soft and tender in nature it should also dry quickly then it should form hard tough and durable film very important point is it should form a hard tough and durable film and it should form a shiny film to some extent if possible so these are the characteristics of the good varnish as desired we can expect here that it should form hard and tough durable film that should last long and should not get affected by the weather conditions in order to run it for the long time coming to the summary of the varnish now what is the summary that we have described the varnish in the different zones now let us try to understand what is this varnish we have seen varnish is homogeneous colloidal dispersion solution of natural or synthetic resins in oils or thinners or both varnish do not contain pigment this is a difference compared to the paint okay then this varnish produces transparent film then we have resins are used in varnish instead of oil this is very important varnish surface do not reflect heat and light now let us compare all these points with the paint in order to see what is the difference summary of the paint as seen paint is basically mechanical dispersion mixture of one or more pigments in vehicle okay so this is paint you have a pigment you are dissolving it into the uh, your vehicle then that is going to ultimately form the dispersed mixture that is your paint now what is the second point paint contains pigment okay if you compare here look in the varnish varnish do not contain pigment but paint contains pigment third point that is paint produces non transparent film but if you see here for varnish comparison it produces transparent film then we have resins cannot be used instead of oil in case of the paint but here in case of varnish resins can be used instead of oil this is the difference if you see here painted surface are going to reflect heat and light very nicely but if you see the last point varnished surface do not reflect heat and light okay so these are the comparison if the difference is asked that what is the difference between paint and varnish then these all five points can be kept in the differences between paint and varnish <clears throat> coming to the very important topic that is insulator okay the last topic of your chapter that is insulator now what are this insulators let us try to have a look on the definition first substances having extremely low thermal and electrical conductivity and which prevent loss of heat are called insulators you can see that insulators are not going to allow electricity or you can say heat to pass through them and that is why they are termed as insulator examples are glass wool and thermocol what are the types of insulating material if you see here the types are insulating natural materials okay 
then we have insulating wools we have insulating foils then we have manufactured insulating material these are the four types of the insulators okay that are classified up till now you have natural insulating materials the name itself says that it is available naturally and manufactured insulating material itself says that it is available it is prepared by the human beings that is it is synthesized in the industries coming to the first type that is natural insulating materials this type of material occur from nature or is obtained from living life for example fire clay and animal hair silica etc they are used in industries for conservation of the heat so this natural insulators are very much important from the industrial point of view to conserve the heat coming to insulating foils this insulating foils are used for the refrigeration purpose nowadays example aluminum foil and zirconium foil then we have insulating wools for example rock wool mineral wool slag wool glass wool these all are the examples of the insulating wools you all are aware these all are the available examples for it coming to the manufactured insulating materials manufactured means we are synthesizing this insulating materials okay and they are finding various applications these include zirconium carbide titanium carbide silicon carbide silica aerogel foam glass urethane etc now what are the properties we have chosen one example that is glass wool why the name is glass wool see just like a wool there are the you can say the filaments are coming out of wool like like this the glass is having appearance like that of the wool filaments okay and that is why it is given the name of your glass wool now what are the properties of this glass wool glass wool possesses low density low thermal conductivity low electrical conductivity glass wool is fire proof it is non combustible material glass wool is resistant to chemicals it possesses good tensile strength so these all are the properties of the glass wool okay it is non combustible resistant to chemicals means it is not going to react with the chemicals and possessing good strength that makes it finding the applications in the different fields what are the applications now the because of these above special properties low density low thermal conductivity electrical conductivity fire proof material resistant to chemical good tensile strength because of these all special properties glass wool is finding application to it is used as thermal insulator in mortars ovens refrigerators walls and roofs of houses so these are the application of the glass wool you can see in oven refrigerators walls and roofs of houses it it is used as a special material it is used in air filters it is used for sound insulation again you can say a special glass proof cabins are there so these all where glass wool can find a special application to make the assembly sound proof glass wool is used to manufacture fiber glass that is very important now another important example of the insulator is thermocol this thermocol we are using thermocol in day to day life and finds a very intense applications in routine life thermocol is having low density it is spongy porous and foam like structure it is shock proof chemically inert low electrical conductivity these all are the special properties of the thermocol that is making it applied in different fields you all are aware where it is used any new material that you are purchasing electronic appliances then that is always wrapped in thermocol because of this special 
properties of the thermocol it can withstand the shocks and that is why during transportation your materials are not getting damaged because of the special shock proof property of the thermocols hence it keeps all the electronic appliances safe during the transportation what are the applications of the thermocol thermocol is used as a ideal packing material for delicate electrical and electronic equipments it is used as heat insulator in refrigeration and air conditioning purpose okay it is used for decoration and protection purpose these are the very important applications you all are aware for decoration and for protection then any new material we purchase again electronic and electrical equipment packing okay then you can say it is used in refrigeration and air conditioning because it is acting as a heat insulator so it is finding the special applications so we have seen so many things up till now you can see very clearly in this session we have described paint and varnish what is purpose of the paint coming to the paint we can see just revise the things that is mechanical dispersion material of one or more pigment in vehicle that we have seen now then what is vehicle vehicle is a liquid consisting of non volatile film forming material that is drying oil and highly volatile so solvent that is your thinner then we have why do we use the paint to protect the surface from insects moisture prevents the corrosion it reflects the heat and light gives good appearance appeal to the surface and also going to reduce the wear and tear of the surface what are the constituents pigments vehicle thinners dryers fillers plasticizers we have seen the pigment is basically solid substance which forms paint when it is mixed with the drying oil then there are two types of the pigments one is white pigment another is colored pigment white pigment are basically helps paint to improve the covering capacity and reduces the cost of the paint and at the same time colored pigments impart a special properties to the paints okay special colors depending on the colors we want we are adding the different colored salt of in form of the pigments the function of pigments gives strength to the paint film pro, uh, protects the paint film from uv radiation improve improves the appearance of the film protects the film from weather conditions and